Good afternoon and happy Wednesday. This is Abby with the Fairport Public Library and I've got another spooky craft for you today. Today we're dealing with the undead and it is adorable. So it's time for another. So let's get started. Here's what you're gonna need for today's craft. Some cheesecloth, some tape, a styrofoam ball or a little basketball or something small, round, a pop bottle, some plaster of Paris, some wire, a measuring cup, and a tin you can throw away, a mixing tin you can throw away. You're also going to need um, some plastic wrap and some black felt. If you don't have plaster of Paris, you can use Mod Podge. That would be my next suggestion. Or if you're really in a pinch, you can use fabric stiffening solution. So step one is to make a structure. It's pretty simple, so I didn't feel like I needed to walk you through it, but I just taped the styrofoam ball on top of the pop bottle with four things of tape. And then I took my craft wire and I wrapped it around and made little arms. Now you don't have to make little arms. The fabric would just lay flat along the ghost and he wouldn't be going woo, but I would like to have a ghost that's going woo, so I made arms. All right, so that is step number one. Like I said, tape, styrofoam ball, tape it to the pop bottle, use your craft wire, make sure it's thick and, and stiff um, and wrap that around the mouth of it so that the fabric can lie on this. This does not have to look good, obviously. Next up, I just took some cellophane and I draped it across the top of it. This is just because we're using plaster of Paris and I'm a little worried that it's gonna stick tight to the, the top. If you're using Mod Podge or fabric stiffener, you don't need to do this step. This is just if you're using plaster of Paris. Now we're gonna make our plaster of Paris. So I just followed the directions on the tub and it said two parts plaster of Paris with one part cold water. So I have two cups of plaster of Paris here. I'm gonna put that into my uh, mixing tray, try to get it all out of there. And then I'm gonna go grab a cup of cold filtered water. So there's my water, pour it in there. And then I'm gonna mix it. I'm gonna use my a really old kitchen spoon to mix it. So get all that water in there with all of the plaster. This is going to take a second. I'm going to mix it to a smooth consistency. Welcome back out to my garage, guys. So now I've got uh, my cheesecloth and I just cut it to make sure it covered my pop bottle. And then I kind of halved it because it was really, um, really see-through. So now I'm going to put it in the plaster of Paris to make sure it gets really saturated. The good thing with this is that it is, um, very holy, so you don't have to worry about it not getting inside the fabric too, because, you know, it's got a lot of holes. So I put some gloves on for this. You might want to do that as well. Try to saturate it as best as possible. fabric and I'm going to drape it over my structure. Now I'm just going to work it. The important thing is, is that you have good structure down around the bottom of the ghost. So you want to pull some of that plaster of Paris down if it's 
overly at the top. Where like this guy, this side is not very plaster of paris -y, so I'm gonna rub it on each other. But you wanna have a good base down here so that it will stand on its own when it's dry. Make it look willowy. issue back here because there's just not quite enough so I'm just going to manipulate it and like that's all you got to do is like play with it to get it how you want it it's so just to give you guys a better view now that my hands aren't covered in plaster of Paris so I moved it around and I moved the little hands to how I wanted them and I pulled some of the fabric down at the bottom so that it has a structure to stand on and I tried to do that on the back too um, there was a little less fabric back here, but this part will all be visible uh, to people who are looking at this. So you can see the structure inside, and you can see how his little arms are going to be. Um, and we're just going to let this dry. Uh, the thing says 20 to 30 minutes, so I will check on it after that and see how it is. In the meantime, we can work on the eyes. Alright, so while our ghosty is drying, I'm going to just like freehand some eyeballs in the mouth. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to fold it and then fold it again. We'll see how this works. I'm not exactly sure how big I want the eyes. So I'm just going to start with a generic like round eyeball. Like a little heart. Okay, now I'm just going to cut it down to till it's the size of a small speck because I can't get over the shape. <laughs> Don't be like me, guys. So there are my two eyes. I'm going to, I might need bigger ones, not sure yet. Now I'm gonna do a mouth, which I may not include. This is all just hypothetical, but let's see. Like a little, ooh. So there we go. Let's see if this works on our ghost and if the ghost is dry. So here it is. It's been about 30 minutes. Looks pretty dry. Feels pretty hard. So I'm gonna attempt to take this off. I apologize about the angle. I will show you it when I am finished in case it doesn't work out very well. It's so cool. Oh my God, it's so cool. Look at his little hands. <laughs> I apologize, what you're hearing is the train. It's not like the screaming of a dead and forgotten ghost. But oh my gosh, it looks so cool. So you're definitely gonna wanna do this outside because I had a lot of flakes flying out at me. But it looks, so you can see I didn't have as much plaster here. So it is not as secure, but this part is secure. So depending on where I put it, this is gonna move a little bit. But the head looks really cool. And if we turn it around, you can see this side. Oh my gosh, it's really cool. So I'm gonna bring this back inside and we'll work on the eyes. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm straight up 100% in love with this ghost. I can't even. So I've got my eyes. And I think I'm gonna do them a little closer together to make them a little cuter. I'm gonna do the eyes first. So I forgot, you need a glue gun. What craft do I do that doesn't need a glue gun? Um, none. 
Here's the answer. Put that right there. Just a blob of glue. It's just felt, so it's not like it's going to be crazy. It's not like we're making a man-eating plan or anything. Stop it. I can't. I'm dying over here. Okay, so look at this ghost. Ah, ooh. Speaking of wooing, do we want a mouth? Don't we want a mouth? Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Oh, I can't decide, you guys. You're going to have to tell me. In the comments, tell me if I should give him a mouth or if I should not give him a mouth. What about if it was like this? Eh, I can't decide. All right, you guys got to tell me. But here's the finished product, and I'm obsessed with it, and it's wonderful, and it's sturdy. This could stay outside. Um, this could it stand on its own on the floor. I just don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I clearly am obsessed with it because, listen to me, I'm insane. You could um, do this on a smaller scale with a small pop bottle, like a 16-ounce or a 12-ounce. Is that what pop bottles come in? Who knows? Um, but... I'm so obsessed with him, I can't even. There you go, you did it. You made a spectral friend who will haunt your house for many years. Now, don't ghost me on this, guys. Share with me if you think I should put a mouth on this ghost because I'm undecided and he's just gonna be there with two eyes until you all tell me what you think. So put it in the comments and share with me also if you make this as well. All right, join me next Wednesday for our final spooky craft before Halloween and I will see you then.